Today is gonna to be such an exciting day. Normally, my family and I take you out on a hike. We go to the desert or we'll go into the forest to do some art. But today, we're headed to the big city, the big city of Mesa, Arizona. <laughs> we are going to do something really exciting and all new. Are you ready for a field trip? All right, guys, let's go. Over the course of history, man has put his mark on walls beginning in the Paleolithic era of 30,000 BC with the Lascaux cave paintings, and all the way to the street art of today. Cave paintings were considered amongst the earliest artworks on Earth, making murals one of the longest standing art forms ever. Since the time of cave painting, people have been leaving their mark all over the world and throughout time. And because of this, we have valuable knowledge of our history. Murals have depicted religious themes, life activities, and everyday themes that have covered walls of public buildings, temples, tombs, palaces, museums, libraries, all sharing values, stories, and dreams of the artist and their community. Today, on our trip, be on the lookout for the artist's message and the details that they use to share it with the community. And when we return home, we'll create some of our own chalk paint so that you can create a mural at your home. A mural is a huge piece of art, usually painted on a wall or a large flat surface. The word mural comes from the Latin word muris, which means exactly that, wall. A mural is usually used to advertise, beautify, or represent an area of culture. Art friends, we are standing here in downtown Mesa and we're taking a look at some of the local murals that are around town here. And this is actually the downtown Mesa mural painted by Lauren Lee. And she's a Phoenix artist. And I wanted to take a look at some of the things from the elements of art that you might notice. You might notice, for example, pattern. If you look around the edge of this, it repeats the same pattern and draws your eye into the middle. You'll also notice the texture. All of these flowers have incredible texture on them. So when you're out and about looking at things, see if you can spot the elements of art. When we look at murals, we oftentimes too think about the purpose of the mural. They may be to advertise or to, um, to just beautify an area. They may also be to tell about somebody's culture or heritage or history. This mural is all about the selfie. This mural is where tons and tons of selfies are shot every day. And people come and they wanna show that they were in Mesa or that they live in Mesa. And so they come and take a picture of themselves in front of it. Probably not the same purpose as an Egyptian mural or maybe a mural in a chapel, uh, in the Sistine Chapel in the Renaissance time period. Um, probably not at all similar to the cave paintings. So this is very, very different and specific to our culture now. Lauren Lee was quoted as saying, when you're indoors all the time, you're seeing all these man-made things. But when you go outside, you see this incredible symphony of technology, the technology of a tree or of a bird. Now we're gonna take a look at this series called Desert Landscape. This is a whole row of murals that I believe there are five total. We're gonna look at the first three of them, but I wanted to take a look at this one first because it reminds me a little bit of our project from last week, our Georgia O'Keeffe project. I also noticed that they use Google thirds by putting the most important or the focal point off on the uh, right-hand side of the mural. I think it's interesting that the artist used a branch to tie it through all the way down to the next mural. The artist in this one used spray paint a lot more than brushes like we saw in the previous one of uh, downtown Mesa. Um, they use stencils to uh, place down their design and then spray paint to paint around it. And so you'll notice it really changes the texture of the piece. It gives it kind of a softness where you don't see brush strokes. This particular mural is done by Mark Matlock and it looks like he has done a couple actually down through that tie together. This is the next section of the Desert Landscape piece by Matlock. I think it's interesting if you look at this that the branch carries through and connects it to the last one that we looked at. But also it has a frame of white around the outside 
having it stand on its own as its own mural. So it's an interesting um, combination of things. In this, you also notice this piece has a softness to it where there's no hard edges. So that we know in this case that this probably was done with spray paint as opposed to applied with a brush. If you look at the phases of the moon up at the top, those were probably um, done using a stencil. This is the third section of Desert Landscape, and I think this is really neat because again, they tied it in, this prickly pear cactus ties into the uh, piece just before it. So they all kind of go together even though they're separate works. Um, I love this one, not only because of the colors, but because it shows us foreground, to middle ground, and background really, really clearly. And we've been talking about that. So if you notice, these prickly pear cactus, they are the closest thing to you. They're super big, in your face, bright bowl, and we know that they're in the foreground. If we look off into the distance, we have a set of mountains. We know they're in the middle ground or in the middle. And the background is this beautiful sunset um, that we see here in Arizona all the time. That would be your background. So this is a traditional landscape. This particular mural is different from any of the others that we've seen because it uses a combination of brush strokes and um, spray paint. So it doesn't have that softness that we saw in the Native American girl one, um, and it, but it creates a really, really interesting texture combining the two. Um, it looks like it is of the Superstition Mountains, but like I said, it has a definite different feel. When we're looking at our elements of art, we know that texture is the way something feels or looks like it feels, and this has incredible texture. I would say that was the element of art that this artist focused on when creating this. One of the interesting things about a large mural like this is that when you're up close, you can see the brush strokes or the um, paint can strokes, um, and it just looks like a ton of texture. But as you back further and further and further away from it, it starts to turn into this rocky surface that almost looks realistic. It's a really interesting um, trick that the artist uses uh, to make something look real or to give it a lot of uh, depth or um, a lot of texture and value. We're standing in front of the Cinderella mural this time, and this one is an example of a mural that has not held up so well. Um, typically a mural needs to be painted every two to three years or at least touched up or repaired, and in this case this one has kind of been abandoned over the years, which is really sad. Um, it's a really neat mural, um, but I actually think kind of the brick showing through um, makes it look old, which it is, but I, I don't know, I kind of like it this way. Um, one of the things that you'll notice is a lot of these murals are done with either exterior spray paint or with um, exterior house paint. Um, sometimes there is a special acrylic paint also that you can use for specific colors that you need. Um, it's, it's a little bit more expensive to get than house paint would be. This one is just done with paint, but there's probably a term that you've heard before called fresco. Fresco was done in the 16, uh, 16th century in Italy, and it actually means fresh. And what happens there is they mix the paint into the plaster as they uh, apply it to the wall. So the color is fixed into the actual building itself. Um, in that case, it would not peel off. It might chip off over time, um, but it's much more sturdy than just applying paint to a uh, well-prepared wall and then sealing it. So this is a little bit different. Another purpose for a mural would be to advertise. This particular business has used a giant shark on the side of their building to advertise. So this is the Surf and Ski um, screen printing shop and they have a huge uh, shark on it to represent their business name. Just another way that murals are used in our culture. These are the Lost uh, Sign murals. It's a series of four murals, and they are done by Jesse Perry and Mark Matlock, and a couple other local artists as well. Um, and these were done to represent the culture of downtown Mesa. Uh, Mesa has always been known for having really amazing uh, old uh, neon lights, and some of the neon lights that are no longer around were memorialized this way. And so we're taking a look right now at the uh, chicken sign. <laughs> this one was done by Jesse Perry 
and he said the coolest part about it was getting to make a giant uh, neon chicken because that's not something that an artist would normally get to do. And the way it worked was the city wanted these done and so they interviewed and went through proposals that artists gave them, that means sketches or ideas, and they chose an artist for each one or artists for each one. And so Jesse was chosen and he presented two proposal ideas to uh, the city and they wanted a combination of both. And so once they settled on an idea, he was able to come out and get started. This particular lost sign mural was by Mark Matlock and we actually looked at another one of his murals or several of his murals earlier. Um, this one is done, it's my favorite, of Buckhorn Baths because it's kind of this mysterious place that I've driven by a million times since I moved to Arizona and I always, I can never understand why someone didn't own it and fix it up. Um, it's thought to have healing waters that run through it and people would go and um, have their arthritis cured and inflammations uh, toned down and and it holds a wildlife museum, which is just an interesting combination to me. So I guess if you want to go look at stuffed wildlife and have your ailments cured, that would be the place to do it. I just always thought it was a quirky place, but the sign that used to be there was memorialized here. And Mark Matlock took a look at it and because the pictures of the sign were so old, they were in black and white. So he had to imagine what this sign would have looked like when it was neon and in color. And so I thought that was a really interesting project that he had. What also makes this one interesting is he had to use a, a glaze process to age it. And that is a process that was used back in the Renaissance, actually. He actually went over it with this uh, darkened glaze um, in order to give it that aged effect. So I thought that was kind of neat to see uh, artists taking old time concepts and bringing them forward into modern, um, modern artworks. Awesome art friends, today we are back at home and we are making mural slash chalkboard paint. The ingredients are cornstarch, any water you can find, food coloring, or you can keep it white, and a disposable cup. Today I'm doing the Not My Arms Challenge with my friend Charlotte. She's back here. So let's get started. So first I'm going to grab the cornstarch. And the amount of cornstarch that you put in the cup matter, like, depends on how much, how much paint you want. So I'm just gonna try and get it on the counter. And then, oh, that's, that's great, perfect. Let's do one more for good luck. Oh! <laughs> that works, okay. Now we're gonna grab our water. It's over here. Over here. no, no other one. And um, um, I can't see very well today. The other one over here. By the, <laughs> by the food coloring. Where's the food coloring? No, no. Right there. Yes, yes. Hot, hot. <laughs> You're on fire. Perfect, perfect. Now we're just gonna pour a little bit of that in there. Oh, that's. A little bit more, a little bit more. Oh, <laughs> I think we kind of missed, but sure. And then we're gonna grab the food coloring right by the water, right by the water. <laughs> Yay, there you go! Woo! Now we're just gonna open it and make sure that we get it in the cup. That's the key art, friends, in the cup. Yep, there we go. Just gonna unscrew it. Perfect. Looks like we're having a little bit of trouble. We got this. You can do it. There you go. There you go. In the cup. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good. That's good. <laughs> okay, now we're just gonna set that down and grab the spoon and the cornstarch the spoon, and we're going to use that. <laughs> Guess I needed some cornstarch on my face. And we're going to use that to stir our mixture. So, just very easily, you know. Try not to make a mess of your mother's house. 
so we're doing this outside if you haven't noticed. And there's there a you go, keep dog. going. Keep going. Barking dog. Keep going. Alright, that's that's great. And that's how you make mural slash chalk paint. Thank you and good night. Oh, oh, yo, oh. I think we're done! Okay. Art friends, that was crazy. So, just to recap, we just made some mural paint or chalk paint um, that you can use on sidewalks or on block walls. We're gonna work on the sidewalk today, but all you need to do it is cornstarch, or if you don't have cornstarch, you can uh, exchange that out for flour. Um, and you need some food coloring. We use gel food coloring, but any kind of food coloring works. And just a little bit of tap water. And you mix it up. It's actually the same, if you use cornstarch, it's the same ingredients as it would be for? Oobleck. Oobleck. Um, so the cool thing is, you're making two projects in one. If you want oobleck, you just add a little bit more cornstarch. If you want chalk paint, you just add a little bit more water so it's like liquid. Um, we just used old watercolor brushes that come inside the watercolor trays. You can use house paint brushes like Bob Ross. You can, you can use anything that you've got around the house um, to paint it on. We're gonna work on our sidewalk today because it's a little easier for you to see, but this stuff also works on block walls if you wanna work upright like a mural artist. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started, right? About this paint is you can actually mix colors so like with chalk you would layer them up and blend them together with paint you would just do it just the same way you would with your your paintbrush in school and two different color paints you can just mix them together so red and blue will make purple purple if you're on a hot surface like we are here in Arizona this will dry super super fast and it might even get a little clumpy as you're trying to work. So you have to move kind of quickly or you might want to choose a spot that's cooler or in the shade. Um, this just washes off with your hose or a bucket of water, just like chalk. One thing that's important to remember when creating a mural or looking at murals is that there's a big difference between murals or street art and vandalism or graffiti. Street art is created by an artist who's been hired or given permission to create on someone's property. Vandalism or graffiti is when someone paints or tags something that's not theirs. Now, some artists in history have blurred these lines. In the early 80s, uh, Keith Haring was creating much of his pop art or graffiti in New York City subways. Haring would use chalk and draw simple stick characters on black paper covering unpurchased ad space. Herring always drew a crowd and was usually arrested. Do you think he should have been arrested? He didn't ask, but it also, it was just chalk. Another artist guilty of street art is Banksy. Banksy has risen to fame by creating art all over the world in the dark of the night. No one even knows who he is. He doesn't ask permission, 
but he's also never been caught. His works, despite this, are worth millions. Why is this different than vandalism? And on the other hand, Diego Rivera, famous Mexican muralist married to our friend Frida Kahlo, was commissioned to paint a mural in the Rockefeller Center in 1932 titled New Frontiers, only to have it chiseled off the wall by David Rockefeller Sr. because he did not paint what he had shown as the sketch or complete the work as contracted. Rockefeller said the work that was painted showed his father as an, in an unflattering way and that it did not represent the political views of their family. Do you think this is right? Good news, awesome artists. Murals are historical creative pieces that have stood the test of time and you get to create one of your very own. Give it a try, make yourself some chalk paint and find a surface that's safe and that you have permission to work on and create an amazing piece of artwork. Please be sure to send me pictures of it. I love to see what you're working on and have an awesome time. Out. Sorry. Your shoes are fit. Thanks. Oh, it was. Oh, I didn't know she was really doing it. <laughs> Murals have depicted religious. Seriously? With the shoveling? Aggressively? <coughs> what the heck is going on? I already on? saw. He's digging a pool. Is he digging a pool? Oh, okay. Are we good to go? Yeah. Murals? Do you want me to go? No, just, just start get through, through it. it. Yeah. This matches my shirt. Right now, selfies. I gotta think for a second. <laughs> Got like one of those flowers or something stuck in here. fixing my hair. Sorry, I didn't see. <laughs> this particular mural. Another way. And hmm. Get low. Mhm. Mm anyway. <laughs> you hug after, okay? I need to breathe. I'm sweating in here. Okay. Cool. Bugs. Are you ready to get started? Keep flying in my face. Oh, just bugs. Like Okay. Bug, bug, bug. <laughs> what? Look at I'm doing this beautiful masterpiece. I know, but this is the one that we're supposed about. to be working on. Okay, I think we're done. It's a masterpiece. Oh, hallelujah. Do you want me to do the